There are so many different factors at play today. It has been a series of events that have unfolded quite erratically, though some events have been anticipated. We expected the fallen angels to appear, and it has begun. The warnings of corporate debt going too far was never a concern. It continues to get worse, but now the mass downgrades have begun right on time. With stock buybacks set to decline by 50%, the central banks better run those printing presses 24-7. You came here for the Truth. So let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at the stock buybacks. We're going to look at the effects on the market and especially the economy. That's the big one because I can show you all the data all the time, but what really matters is the people. Let's begin with this. This is from Bank of America on the left hand side, US and EU GDP set to slump by $4.4 trillion annualized in the first half of 2020. I'm not sure where it's going to be, but I have a good feeling that it's much worse than the expectations. They are never able to actually tell you what they think because it might get worse. They don't want to scare anybody. Just like when they make projections of how fantastic things are going to be, they always overshoot because they want to make sure that these numbers are set in stone. They're always padded. They're always made to look a certain way based on what other countries are doing. This is a game that they play. Right hand side, safe haven treasuries now yield less than prior crashes. It is unbelievable how worthless these investments are becoming. Go around the world, we see the negative yielding debt that is available basically everywhere. Certain countries, it's across the entire spectrum. You could hold a 10 year bond and get negative return on that. It is mind boggling. It doesn't make any sense. I have questions from people all the time. They say, I don't understand that. Are you telling me that they're not going to get any return from it? And it's it's worse than that. They're actually going to lose money by investing in something. Usually when you put your money into an investment, you assume that there's going to be a return or at least that's the hope. But with the craziness that's going on today with central banks, particularly in Europe, also Japan, pen, we see that things are really upside down. Left hand side, record money market inflow. So people don't know what to do. So they're basically parking their money in essentially cash. And you have looked at what is an absolute record high. This has been going on for the last several months, in fact, as you can see, but it has really accelerated just recently. On the right hand side, masked monster redemptions from the prime money market funds in the past three weeks. And the prime is the yellow, as you can see, but the government is clearly where the money is flowing. On the left hand side, fifth largest week of outflow from government bonds. So now we know where the money is moving out of and to. This is key and I always try to stress this to my subscribers. Look at the data from the EPFR. I give out all my sources. I tell you exactly where to go for everything. Everything is always in the description of my videos under the sources because it's so important that this information doesn't come from me, but that we are all together in this trying to make sense of it all. On the right hand side, record cumulative inflows into tech funds, which I find hilarious because this is when people are grasping at straws. They're trying, they're trying their best right now. What do I buy? And the NASDAQ has outperformed the other markets, despite the fact that it has gone down considerably. When you look at it compared to the Dow, it has definitely done better. But to me, this is an act of desperation, not necessarily fundamentals. The fallen angels. This is a very interesting topic, something that I've been talking about here on this channel for quite some time. Corporate debt has expanded at a rate we've never seen before. This is very worrisome, yet if you look at it in general, nobody's really concerned about it. The analysts don't care, the corporations don't care, the governments don't care, central banks definitely don't care, and now the data is starting to pile up. You could see out of Goldman Sachs, we estimate that around $550 billion worth of investment grade bonds will become fallen angels over the next six months. That tally is down here in the bottom right corner. Let me give you a quick download of what this all means. You may not be familiar, if you, especially if you haven't watched any of my videos, but basically let me give you just a simplified example. There is corporate debt out there and let's just say it was rated at triple A, all right? We got the best of the best and you got different fund companies out there and they have a particular fund. We'll call this 
the super fund, all right? This super fund is only able to hold triple A rated debt. Now, suddenly this country, this corporation, whatever it might be, gets downgraded. All right, now they're a double A. Well, that means they have to sell that part of that portfolio, that part of that fund in order to meet the requirements set by that fund. So in doing so, you create a big problem for this country, for this corporation, whatever it happens to be. And of course, it's not just one company, but many companies. The real big problem is when they get downgraded into what's called junk. So it's no longer investment grade, it becomes junk. Now there's a lot of what you would consider big corporations that their debt is in in that junk territory, but there is a huge amount that is sitting just above junk. So now we see them, as they call it, fallen angels falling underneath that line into that territory of junk. A lot of these different funds have to sell. It cannot hold the junk inside of these certain funds. Now, I hope that was a good explanation, just a simplified way to put it. When you've got a huge number, like $555 billion worth, this is huge. This is big news. In dollar terms, the first quarter 2020 has seen a record amount of fallen angel bonds. Quarterly dollar notional amounts of bonds downgraded from investment grade to high yield. This shows you from 2007 up until the present, and it's clear we've gone way beyond what we saw during the financial crisis. Who knows what the next numbers will look like? The ones after. All of this right now is a question mark, and we need to see more data on it, but this was expected. Corporate debt went crazy. It was expanding at a rate never before seen. There were very few people out there that were starting to warn about it, saying it's a problem. Nobody wanted to listen. This could absolutely cause a cascade of failures. So pay particular attention. This is just a few examples from a chart that I found. It shows their rating on here. If you're interested, you could pause the video, take a look at it yourself. One of the issues that we're dealing with today is that there's a lot of uncertainties. We're not sure how quickly things will come back online. And that gives us a lot of questions. And what they predict, in this case here, Morgan Stanley and all of the other big institutions, is that we have this V-shaped recovery. But as I noted in my previous video, it seems like they're starting to round that out a bit. Suddenly, it doesn't seem so likely that things will turn around on a dime. This blue line here happens to be 2008 and the way that it moved along. Real GDP should recover faster compared with 2008. As I mentioned before, I want to say it again, it depends how quickly the recovery occurs. That recovery I'm speaking about is how soon do the stores open, how soon do people get back to work, and they're moving freely in the streets. There was a poll that I saw that suggested if things opened up or when they open up, Will you be ready to just get back out there? And many people said no. They want to wait it out. They're concerned. Of course, they want to get to work. They want their lives to be back in order. But at the same time, they're worried. So this right here, as far as I'm concerned, tells me that it's going to be a more prolonged situation. We'll see what happens. The number one buyer of stocks since 2009 has been share repurchases or stock buybacks. I would say nearly 99% of the investment community doesn't know that. But as far as I'm concerned, this is extremely vital to understand. This blue line at the top here, corporate net purchases. And by far, corporations buying their own stock is the number one buyer. What does that tell you about where the market has gone? If you saw the S&P 500 increase by 400%, does that show the strength, the fundamentals, and everything within this market? Or is it that we have cheap and easy money fueling this bubble? So what happens if these share repurchases start to slow down or even stop? Well, check this out. Goldman Sachs, we expect S&P 500 share repurchases to fall by 50% during 2020. I've seen different numbers regarding the stock buybacks, 1.1 trillion, 800 billion. Okay, anyway, it's a big number. They're the number one buyer, that's a fact. So we would see a 50% decline 
decline and that would absolutely impact stock prices. The only difference is that there is now globally significantly more central bank easing quantitative easing that's taking place but can it necessarily replace what we had seen with the stock buybacks that's a lot of money that needs to go in and it's not necessarily coming directly from the central banks the central banks are there to buy the mortgage-backed securities they are there to buy the debt and so on I have theorized for quite some time that eventually Federal Reserve will have to do what the Bank of Japan has been doing for a while and simply start to buy stocks. We'll see what happens. Bankruptcies won't save retail this time. Retail has for years faced the challenges of slowing foot traffic, changing shopping patterns, and online competitors that has caused the retail upheaval some analysts have deemed the retail apocalypse. You've been seeing that here on this channel. Right now, they are dealing with a huge headache that will result in bankruptcies, that will result in mass layoffs. This is going to put further pressure, not just on the industry, but of course, the millions of people that work work at these places. This is a good article out of Reuters. If you want to know what's going on with the bailouts of the airlines, U.S. airlines apply for U.S. payroll help, but terms are still unclear. It gets into the details of how much they're all getting and so on. I'm not going to break it all down for you, but billions are going in every direction and I'm not sure that's going to be enough. It seems like I'm going to be making a video in a few weeks from now telling you how they've doubled and tripled the amounts. And of course, this all really hits people at home, but they don't make the connection. That's what I'm trying to do here. The economic aspect is so important, not just what is the hot stock tip today. The US economy is currently facing its toughest challenge since the 1930s, and millions of Americans suddenly find themselves out of work. Check this out. A total of 1,100 Americans were polled, and one in four, 25% said they don't have any any emergency savings at all. Another 23% only have enough to get by for three weeks. Those that get the $1,200 stimulus check, 42% said that they have to immediately spend it on things like groceries. Clearly there's a problem and it cannot be resolved by government stimulus. I'm sure that $1,200 is going to help a lot of people, but it's going to run out fast. My friends in Norway, I got one for you. Norway's sovereign wealth fund lost a record $113 billion in the first quarter. More money was put into equities versus bonds because they saw the growth there. And now they lost a lot of money. And what are they doing? They're not selling equities. They're actually selling bonds. So the ratio in between the two is getting even wider. And I understand why they don't want to be buying negative yielding bonds. It just shows you that these are really crazy times for investors. This article here out of Bloomberg is talking about Finland and they're dealing with a massive crisis and it happened so quickly. There are more than 300,000 Finns who suddenly find themselves without work, either through temporary layoffs or outright job cuts. Basically at this time, they have absolutely no way to deal with that amount. It's never been like this before and I'm just curious to see how they try and handle it. I don't think it's going to end very well. These are just a couple examples here, but I'm seeing all that data from all over the world. Countries, companies, and individuals nobody is ever prepared that's all for this video if you found it informative hit that thumbs up button you are supporting me when you do so thank you very much since the growth on this platform has basically disappeared i started to do content on others you can find me on every other platform out there definitely check me out at the money gps Learning how to sell online is very important and people are now just realizing that. I created a free e-course several months ago to teach people how to sell on Amazon. If you're one of my subscribers, I highly recommend checking it out at the amazongps.com. Financial education was not taught in school and that's on purpose. They don't want people to be prepared. Well, if you read these two books, you're going to get everything you need to know. Check them out at the link in the description if you want the audiobook instead, moneygps.com. I covered so much good information in this video here. If you haven't seen it, you definitely need to click on it and I will see you over there.